Ready? Good evening, folks. We're going to start the meeting. If everyone can please quiet down. This uh, Board of Health meeting starts at 5.30. This meeting is being recorded. If everyone can please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I did that. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. So we'll go to the minutes. All right, first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes from March 19th, 2024, as written. I have a motion and I second those. All in favor? Aye. Approved. All right. <coughs> you okay? Yeah. So all right. This. Um, all right. So this is a public hearing to discuss the housing regulations. During this pub public hearing, nothing else but the regulations will be discussed. There will be time for the public to be heard after the board has discussed the regulations and made their recommendations. When it's time for the public to speak, when it's your turn to speak, please come up to the microphone and state your name and address prior mm. to speaking. There will be no shouting out. Please be considerate to others. And I also ask if anyone has a cell phone, if they could please silence it, because it's very disruptive. So I call this public health. Um, so I'll make a motion to open, open, open the it. public hearing. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 17.32. You want to take over? I can. All right. So I put together a PowerPoint presentation tonight to um, show the board and the public a little bit about the um, current requirements of the housing code and some recent changes that came about in uh, April of 2023. So um, in 2020-23, the sanitary code brought 10 new requirements about landlords and their availability. But in all, um, there were 3,831 changes compared to the 2022 um, version of the housing code. Um, a lot of it was um, Scribner errors and, and you know, other edits like that. But there were some major changes as far as um, landlord's responsibilities. So. Um, one of the things that, that the, the state asks everybody to do as a landlord is to, to know their landlord rights, but also what their tenants' rights are. And um, this, is, this is guided by 105 CMR 410, the minimum standards of fitness for human habitation, state sanitary code chapter two. And, and a major part of, of what happens with the Board of Health on going out in inspections is getting involved in houses that don't have heat, don't have electricity, don't have plumbing, and um, trying to make decisions whether to um, actually condemn a house and, and make people move out or um, temporary vacating while repairs are made. So under the code, when a residence or portion has been condemned and placarded as unfit for human habitation, and the occupant of a condemned dwelling unit, a rooming unit, is not the owner of the residence. And this is a major change, because um, it used to be the Board of Health was required to do this. The owner shall provide comparable, suitable housing for the occupant for the following time period, or whichever is shortest. So prior to this change in the regulation, if the Board of Health uh, condemned an apartment or someone had to move out, we had to pay for it as, as the Board of Health of town not the landlord. And as a result, a lot of boards of health were very reluctant to uh, make that call. So they, they, now the landlord has to find uh, comparable or suitable housing and not, in a, not a hotel room with two beds. Um, it has to be comparable to what they're living in. <clears throat> so it could be for the remaining term of the lease or rental period. Such time as a residence is deemed suitable for habitation by the Board of Health, so un until the house was restored to compliance with the housing code, 
or such time as the occupant finds alternative permanent housing and voluntarily terminates their tenancy. So this is a point where, where a landlord could wind up with a tenant staying in an Airbnb, and this happened in court um, three weeks ago. There was a house that was, was being condemned. The landlord was putting the, going to put the people up in the two hotel rooms with two queen beds, went to court. I went to court uh, with them, and the judge told them that he needed to find an Airbnb for these people. Um, I was shocked myself that, that it's you know, to that extreme. So the, the new code has shifted heavily um, to the benefit of the tenants, not to the landlords um, anymore. And that's, this is what, what the judge was talking about. You know, find them a three-bedroom house that takes, these people had two dogs, two cats, two guinea pigs, and it was going to be the landlord's um, responsibility. And a lot of the problems that we're encountering uh, with housing complaints has to deal with um, electricity, gas, and heating oil. And this is another change. The owner shall provide the electricity or gas used in each dwelling unit unless the electricity or gas is metered through a meter which serves only the dwelling unit or the other area under the exclusive use of an occupant of that dwelling unit, except as allowed in um, 105 CMR 410-300. I'll show you that later. And a written rental agreement provides for payment by the occupant. And currently, there's a lot of leases that I'm seeing that it's not explicitly spelled out in the lease that the tenant is responsible for the electricity, responsible for the heat, or responsible for um, trash. And um, on oil, the owner shall provide for the oil used for heating or hot water in each dwelling unit unless oil is provided through a separate tank which serves only the dwelling unit and and this is a change, the occupant is required to provide the oil under a written rental agreement and um, the leases I've been seeing lately don't exactly spell out um, that the tenant doesn't have to pay for the oil or does have to pay for the oil. And even though it's in, it's in the agreement, um, I'll go back one second, there's another part in here that says that the tenant actually has to sign a separate statement that they agree that they're going to pay for the oil or they're going to pay for the electricity. It can't just be written in there that the tenant pays for it. They actually have to write that they agree to accept that, that responsibility. And, and that's become a, a, a problem um, with our inspections. So this is an example of an oil tank that burst in a, a two-family house. There was only one oil tank feeding two apartments. The landlord had told the tenants they were sharing the oil tank. Um, it was illegal. And um, to this day, um, they still don't have heat at, at this two-unit house here in town. They were given an opportunity to move to a hotel, to two rooms with two queen beds, but they have pets and dogs and kids. It wasn't going to work. Um, the board, several meetings ago, talked about condemning this house and making the people move out. Um, they asked if they could stay. They, they had electric heaters they could use. They wanted to um, tough it out. And I think you remember we made the decision not to condemn the house and let them stay. This was the extent of the cleanup that the landlord felt that he had to do. Um, he threw some speedy dry on it, vacuumed up a little bit, but the whole house um, stunk like oil. There was really not much he was going to do. He doesn't live in the area. Um, he lives four or five towns away. He had bought the house himself in May and, and hadn't done much of an inspection. Um, that's a picture of a new oil tank that was installed. I'm at the fire department there. Speedy Dry is still there. Some of the oil smell had gone away. The, the landlord used oil and um, pine saw, I think, to clean the floor and the speedy dry was there because of the, the water from, from that. Another problem we're finding um, when we go out is that there's no ventilation um, in rooms. People are complaining about mold. Um, toilets that aren't vented or the vent is there, but it's not vented to the outside. 
um, windows that don't close properly. Um, I don't know that anyone's complained about the floor ratios or any of that, but there is a lot of cases of no mechanical ventilation capable of exhausting air to the outdoors. A lot of things are just um, ventilating into the ceilings and, and causing mold. And mold has been a major uh, complaint going out. So, and this is in, in the new code, that when the Board of Health determines that natural ventilation is insufficient to remove excess moisture, mechanical ventilation is required. And it says that the ventilation shall be installed and maintained in accordance with the State Building Code, and that the owner shall install proper installation, ensure proper installation in compliance with accepted standards and maintain an operable condition free from leaks, obstructions, defects, all facilities and equipment which the owner is required to provide, and all owner installed equipment. And the list is, is extensive here, and this is, has been a big change. Um, it starts with sinks, bathtubs, toilet, toilets, water heating facilities, gas pipes, heating pipes, water pipes, cooktops, catch basins, drains, connections, subsurface sewage, which is normal, electric lights, smoke detectors, carbon monoxide alarms, all heating and ventilating equipment, refrigerators with freezers, um, if the apartment was rented with a refrigerator and freezer by the landlord. If you rented it without a refrigerator or a freezer, it's up to the tenant to supply it, but you have to put that in writing. And I'm seeing leases that it's, that it's not in writing. And tenants who don't have leases, none of it's in writing, so the landlord is, is responsible. This is a uh, picture of a carbon monoxide detector from a, a recent inspection, and it's located about two feet off the floor. Um, it's not properly installed, and when we uh, went to look at it, there were no batteries in it. It's just a carbon monoxide deck that a, that a landlord installed himself, and that was how it was done. So you're responsible for their dishwashers. If you, if you provide clothes machines, dryers, garbage grinders, air conditioners, microwaves, anything that the landlord supplies, he has to maintain in working condition. And then the occupants are responsible for um, some things here under the changes to the code as well. And if they install, actually the, the occupant has to ensure that everything is installed in compliance with the same standards required of the landlords. Um, there can't be any defects and obstructions. And it has to be maintained by the tenant. So if they put in a dishwasher, a clothes washer, a garbage disposal, an air conditioner, a microwave, a range hood, all of those things, they are responsible for it. The landlord is no longer responsible for anything that the tenant installs with the landlord's approval. Every occupant, and, and, and some of these um, situations that I see, and I, I call them um, rent busters, for, for lack of a better term. There are some professional um, tenants out there that specialize in um, not paying rent and doing damage to, to units. I've seen it. Um, I, I had a landlord, I was probably out there five times in seven days, and every time he fixed something two hours later, something else is broken so that they don't have to pay their rent. And, and that's one of the reasons that made me think about starting to have these inspections, is that it doesn't only cover the, the tenant, it, it covers the landlord, that if the landlord makes an improvement and there's an inspection. And two days later, the, the kitchen cabinet door is laying on the floor. It didn't happen by accident. Um, and, and I had one where a tenant said that the oil burner failed, but there was oil all over the top of the oil burner. And that, that's impossible for oil to go from inside the oil burner to the top of the oil burner. Someone took oil and poured it on the oil burner to make it look like it was broken. That's what happened. So um, we have no way of knowing about these things if we don't get to look at them until something goes wrong. So um, if, the, if the tenant puts in a dishwasher, or my, all, anything a tenant installs, they're responsible for. They can't blame it on the landlord. If we don't do an inspection, it turns into a he said, the landlord installed that, I didn't. Well, no, the landlord says you installed it. Um, and, and it's just there's no way to, to sort that out. 
In multi-unit residences, the owner shall maintain free from obstruction every means of egress in common areas used and attended for occupants for more than one dwelling unit. So if you have two units or more, the landlord is supposed to shovel the snow, shovel the walk, shovel the stairs, do all of those things. There are um, a lot of these that I've gone out to, and, and we've had um, 52 verified um, housing complaints in the last two years here in Dudley. And I would say that probably a third of them still haven't been resolved. They're, they're still open um, complaints. So um, unless the, the doorway is, is only that tenant, if, if they have their own door onto a porch down their own stairs, they're responsible for it. The landlord is not responsible for it. Um, and, and that's a change as well um, in that code. In your multi-unit um, residence, and, and then this was two or more units. Um, you can't leave anything in the hallways. You, you can't let them block stuff in, in there. Um, fire escapes, balconies, they can't put gas grills on their balconies and do all those things. Um, but once again, it, it, it says that the owner shall ensure they maintain free of snow and ice, but only if it's a shared walkway or a shared, shared porch or a shared hallway. This is a four unit um, apartment building in town. Um, I, this is what I encountered to go do the inspection and um, I, I had to risk falling down on the ice to go up the stairs. The landlord didn't want to shovel the walk. This is um, another house in town with a stair from the back, the back egress, which would be a fire escape, that the stair broke and the tenant fell through the stair and rather than fix the stair, the landlord put a chair on it to warn them um, that it was broken. And, and this was back in um, December. And despite um, two orders from the Board of Health to make multiple repairs to this residence, that chair is still there today and that, that stair is still broken. There's the front shot. Now you can see you put a brand new stair above the one that's broken, but didn't get to the, to the one down there. Anything that's corrodible, anything has to be painted, has to be maintained. Um, there can't be any rotting wood. Um, where things tie into the building, they have to be maintained. They have to stay watertight. I see um, a lot of houses in town that the coverings over the porches have separated from the masonry. The flashing's pulling away. The water's going in behind the walls. That's getting into the walls in the tenant's apartments. It's causing mold and it's causing the paint to peel off the inside. And um, I, I worked in another town where they didn't allow um, more than two units of apartments. They didn't have three and four unit apartments. And um, one, of the, one of the biggest problems there was, um, again, wet basements, mold, um, and ventilation, but never had really the amount of egress problems and, and porch problems. A lot of the apartments were one owner in, in one floor and a tenant in another. This regulation is not intended um, to cover anything that is owner-occupied and has a rental by another person in that unit. If an owner is occupying one of the units, you don't, you don't need to um, register, you don't need to have an inspection, you don't need to do any of those things. Um, every apartment or house I've ever seen that the, that the owner lived there was in good shape and, and these things don't happen. A lot of our apartments aren't owned by people that don't, don't live in town. Um, they live three, four, five, six, seven towns away. Some of them have never even met their tenants. Um, as I go out and do inspections, they say, I've, I've been here for two years and I've, I've never met my landlord. Um, and, and again, they changed it that the occupant's responsible for maintaining free of snow and ice, the means of egress, under their exclusive use. So if you've got a tenant that's got their own porch and their own stairs, it's up to them to shovel it. Um, another change is, uh, and we'll, we'll get to it, um, this has been a common problem. I, I drive by houses or I pull up to a house for an inspection and there's no locks whatsoever in the front doors. There's actually a hole in the door where the lock used to be and, and the front door is just open. Anybody could walk into that apartment, hide on a staircase, attack somebody, um, you know, whatever. So 
Now, every resident shall be capable of being secured against unlawful entry. Every entry door of a dwelling unit shall be capable of being secured against unlawful entry. And this got a little tougher now. So this used, it used to be um, four units. Now, the main entry door of a residence containing more than three units shall be so designed or equipped so as to close and lock automatically with a lock including a lock with an electrically operated striker mechanism, a self-closing door, and associated equipment. So now if you have three units or more, you have to put in electronic locks. You have to have um, some type of a combination, whether it's a push button to go in. The doors have to be self-closing. Um, uh, a landlord recently did this to his unit. It was, it was fairly expensive. He was concerned about doing it. But um, I gave him a copy of the code, and, and he, he did take care of it. And it probably took him a month to be able to find somebody that could actually do this. Um, I've spoken to the tenants that live there. They're very happy that they have this entry system and, and push buttons. They feel a lot safer. Every single door locker now. Excuse me. Just the entry doors. Oh. So front door and back door, if it's a common Pat, hallway. Pat, Pat, we're not going to All right. Just keep talking. If you could just wait, I'll, I'll answer those questions in the end, but. You weren't here when we announced that. Okay. So we asked to please yeah. just hold off until everyone has a chance to speak. Yeah, so these are for common areas only. So common hallways, a common back door, and, and a common front door. So, um, and unfortunately now, the owner of a residence shall provide the following for electrical supply and illumination. So in a residence containing more than one dwelling unit or, or rooming unit, light fixtures have to be in good working order that a motion sensor operated on timers, motion sensor or on timers. No more switches. You can't have a switch in the hallway that your tenant can turn on um, if you have more than one unit. Or they can be on 24-7. Um, and this applies to foyers, hallways, stairways, porches, decks, passageways, exterior stairways, fire escapes. Um, here's a common light in the hallway. Um, that's a picture of the light bulb broken off in the socket. Um, there, there were no lights um, in the common hallway of this four unit um, apartment house. And this was all the way up um, to the second floor as well. And now there's a new requirement that the owner and manager um, has to be um, supply contact information. And you also, when you rent an apartment, have to give the um, occupant, it's a pamphlet that the state publishes, it's a notice of their legal rights and responsibilities of the occupant. I've asked um, every, every tenant that I've come in contact with um, if they've ever received their legal rights and responsibilities, and, and the answer is no. Um, this is something I didn't know about un until I read this updated um, code myself, but this is another, another change. So every owner of a residence um, who does not reside therein shall post signage, which contains the owner's name, street address, and telephone number, if applicable. So at, at every apartment building that a, a landlord owns, you have to post a sign that's no less than 20 inches um, either at the front door or inside the hallway in, the, in a common area where, where anyone can see it. And um, I've had to go out at 6 o'clock in the morning for the fire department to um, go to a call. There was a woman in town who had some type of a psychotic event. She thought that her gas appliances were talking to her. And she ripped the gas lines off the back of the stove, and she was in the basement trying to rip off the gas meter. And three apartments in that building filled up with, um, with natural gas. No one knew um, the landlord's name, couldn't find anything on a, on a Sunday morning at 6 o'clock. Um, next thing is you need to provide the name, street address, and telephone number of the managing trustee or partner. The name, street address, and telephone number of a property manager who does not reside in the building. And here's the kicker um, for me. The telephone number of the owner or property manager shall be regularly monitored, but no less than once every 12 hours. So now they're saying that if you're a landlord, you, you have to have some type of an answering machine, an answering service, or the ability to monitor your phone once every 12 hours. You can't miss a phone call or, or call, call them back in a day. 
And if you're not going to be available, um, you know, ha now have to provide the occupants with an alternative contact person and phone number for periods that you as landlords weren't going to be there. Um, that's a new burden for the, for the landlord. Every owner of a residence has to, um, for each occupant, post in a location. Um, not only supply it with them, but post in a location a copy of the notice of occupants' legal rights and responsibilities issued by the department. The state has a, has a document. I haven't read it myself, but this is a, a new requirement for landlords and tenants so far haven't seen any of this. Um, the postings, all of these postings, as I, I said, have to be 20 square inches in size. They have to be durable and they need to be adjacent to the mailboxes or within the uh, interior of the residence um, visible to the occupants. Um, everybody has to put a number on their house. Um, I'm, I'm not seeing any uh, issues with numbers not on buildings, but sometimes unit numbers are confusing uh, because they're, they're near the address numbers and it, and it makes it hard to figure out, um, you know, is this number one um, Green Street or is this number 23? So. Um, an, another thing that that they want, and, and it has to be visible from the from the street. So, no room in an area in a residence can be used for habitation if it's subject to excessive moisture. We um, we do get a lot of complaints about moisture. There has been a lot of um, upgrades of of replacement windows back before windows needed to be energy star and fit tight and a lot of the windows don't fit properly and uh, moisture is coming in under the windows um, it is causing mold in some of these units and because there's not proper ventilation out mold mold is an issue I had a recent um, inspection so you can't rent out or let anybody habitate a room if more than three quarter of its total floor area has a floor to ceiling height of less than seven feet there's a lot of basement apartment apartments in town, and and people have rented them, and they were and they were happy when they rented them. But when something um, goes wrong, or the heat goes out, or something else, suddenly that that six foot ceiling that's in the basement um, has become an issue. And when you go out and do the inspection, we have software that we use. If if the ceiling height isn't seven feet, it's a violation, um, and that apartment is automatically um, not habitable. And that could turn into a bad situation for a landlord, having to put somebody up in suitable housing or something similar to where they were, not in, an apart in a um, hotel room. And we, we do have a few of these, so far that I've seen. Um, every occupant of a residence has to exercise reasonable care in the use of all building and structural elements of the residence. And that's an important statement there because when I go out to do an inspection and I, I have the feeling that that there is a uh, and I have to say a rent buster, and I've inspected that 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 apartment prior to them moving in, and um, somehow when the first month's rent is due, there's a kitchen cabinet on the floor or the toilet's cracked in half, or something else is wrong. Um, I would, I would lean to the fact that the occupant is, you know, not using the, the care that they're supposed to be using under the code. The code does cut both ways. And, and I think that landlords need some protection from the occupant, and the occupants need some protection from some of the landlords. And, I, and I, we're not trying to say that all the landlords are bad, but we, we do have a number of, of um, situations in town that are pretty serious. Railings. Every owner of a residence shall provide a safe handrail um, on at least one side. I haven't seen a handrail on one um, of the apartments that I've gone and done an inspection on for housing complaints. There, there just aren't any handrails there. Screens. Um, this is a this is a problem. In, you know, after April first. Um, screens have to be in place and they have to be put in by the, by the landlord. Um, there's a, a mesh size for the screen. They can cover just the bottom part of the window that can open, but they have to seal at the top. I have um, gone out on inspections for um, no heat or um, 
mold complaints. The landlord pushes back a little bit. I drive by a couple of days later and I see that the screens are punched out of the screen door, or the screens are punched out of some of the windows. Um, if the apartment was inspected, if all of that stuff was in place, once again, it goes, it goes back to the occupant is abusing the, the landlord's property, not the landlord's being a bad landlord and leaving them with, with bad screens. Um, expandable screens, those magnetic ones that clip together, um, that you hang in the window, they're not allowed um, anymore. They have to be a real screen in a, in a real frame. You have to install screen doors for all doorways opening directly to the outside of any dwelling unit or, or rooming unit where the screen doors will be permitted to slide to the side or open in an outward direction. Um, there's many doors that that's not possible, but also uh, my feeling is if, if the doors have automatic closing uh, as they're required for, for these units, there'd be no need to put a screen on there because the door closes automatically. No one's going to be able to leave it open. But there is a requirement from April 1st to October 31st, and this has been a pretty common, um, not just in this town, thing for tenants to pop a screen out and, and call up and complain and say, my screen's out. I don't want to pay my rent. My landlord won't fix it. Um, so once again, if the screens were there on April 1st and they were intact, the tenant did something to it. <coughs> Rubbish. Um, and there's been a change, there's been a change in this, but this is actually in favor of the landlords. Um, the owner of any residence that contains two or more dwelling units, the owner of any rooming house, homeless shelter, or manufactured housing, um, shall be responsible for and pay for the final collection and ultimate disposal of refuse. So you're responsible for the trash disposal for two units or more, <clears throat> but again, unless you put it in their lease that they're responsible for it and they sign a statement explicitly saying after that paragraph, I understand I'm responsible for rubbish disposal. Otherwise, landlords will have to pay for it. Um, your occupants um, have to follow requirements. Um, they have to take care of the recyclables. They're supposed to put the trash out to the curb and, and put things in the proper place. I'm seeing landlords being forced to put the trash out. Um, that's no longer required. It's up to the tenants. Um, occupants and owners are responsible f for their bulk stuff. If a, if a, a tenant's going to throw away a mattress, they can't throw it in your backyard and say, you did it. <clears throat> they have to get rid of it. If a, if a tenant calls and asks for an inspection, um, we have to do an inspection within 24 hours. And um, it says here that we, we shall inspect the dwelling unit or rooming unit and common areas upon receipt of a written, oral, telephonic, or electronic request for inspection from an occupant of that dwelling or rooming unit, and the Board of Health shall conduct this inspection regardless of whether the occupant requesting the inspection has previously notified the owner, so they don't have to tell you. They can just pick up the phone and say, I've got a bad landlord, I want you to come look now. Rather than give you a chance as landlords to go out and fix something, they have the opportunity to call us. If there's an eviction, litigation, or other dispute pending between the owner and the occupant, we still have to do the inspection. Um, we can't get involved in, um, and I hear it all the time, you know, she's a pain in the butt, he's a bad landlord, I'm not paying the rent, I'm hiring a lawyer. We, we don't, don't want to hear any of that and don't want to be involved in any of that. None of that matters um, to the Board of Health. The occupant requesting the inspection um, can remain anonymous. And it doesn't have to be um, an occupant um, as we get a little further into this, but if someone complains, we don't have to tell you which tenant um, in, in which apartment complained and we would, we would want to inspect um, all of the apartments. The problem with, um, with tenants um, complaining is um, it, it shows that 80% of the tenants that complain either get evict eviction notices or they get their rent raised. Um, if they don't have a lease, they get a 10-day notice to quit um, or, or they get a, a, a rent increase. So. The Board of Health shall investigate complaints or requests for inspections concerning a residence 
received from a person who is not an occupant of that residence. So if, if somebody's walking by a house or doesn't even like you, they can pick up the phone and they can make something up and say, I, I want that apartment inspected, and we have to do it. We don't know if they made it up or not, uh, but we have to arrange to, to get there. And um, it's a visual assessment, um, record reviews, contact with the occupants, managers, maintenance, um, and upon completion of the investigation, the board shall um, either conduct the inspection or if determined there's no justification for an inspection, record the decision. So um, when I go out, I look at the exterior of the building. Um, I'll ask to look at the basement. If, if things check out, um, I'll ask the tenant if I could look at the apartment if they say no. And plenty of tenants say no. Um, they, they do say no. Then that's the end of that that inspection. Um, it's, it's not warranted, it's not, it's not verified, um, that's it. But this is, a, this is a new thing that someone who doesn't even live in your house can uh, make a complaint and, and ask that your apartments be inspected. We um, have to use our best efforts to schedule and complete an inspection at a time mutually satisfy, satisfactory to the occupant and the Board of Health. Um, it says that we have to conduct it within one business day after the receipt of a request if alleged uh, conditions include violations um, under 105 CMR 410. I will show you that list. It's extensive and some of it, um, in my mind, is pretty minor, but under these changes to the housing code, they're con considered to be priority violations and they need to be inspected right away. Um, if it's not, in, in that list, then the inspection shall be conducted within five business days after a request um, if alleged conditions do not include any of those um, violations. And they only have to allege it. They, they don't have to show me a picture. They don't have to prove it. Um, so on the, on the moisture stuff, and, and there's been quite a bit of this, the inspector who discovers the existence of excess moisture or appearance of mold during an inspection shall investigate the potential sources. The Town of Dudley Board of Health actually um, has very good equipment for this. We have moisture meters. Um, we've been trained in, in the use of the moisture meter. It's not just looking at it and touching it and saying it feels wet. You get the percentage. There's an allowable percentage. Um, we, we have the equipment to, to do that right. But as far as plumbing leaks, structural defects, all of those things, um, it, it's going to fall on, on the landlord. Here's the, here's the kicker um, that I was surprised about. So environmental testing shall not be required to determine the existence of excess moisture or appearance of mold. If such testing is conducted, those results shall not be used as the sole determinant of the existence of excess moisture or appearance. So it falls down to the Board of Health inspector. And if, and if the Board of Health inspector says it's excessive moisture, the landlord could go out and do environmental testing, but that will not be the guiding light as to whether or not there's excessive moisture. It will be up to the, to the Board of Health. And here we get into the, the list of, of uh, what they consider to be uh, a, a danger and materially impair um, public health. Some of them make sense, failure to provide water supply, hot water, pressure, um, failure to provide heat, improper venting, use of a space heater or water heater prohibited um, by 105 CMR. You have no way of knowing if tenants are using um, space heaters in your apartments. You don't get to inspect them either. Um, that's something we find on an inspection, but it falls at the, at the landlord's feet that we say you can't use um, heaters on an extension cord and therefore I have to condemn your house and you have to um, put these people up and not in a hotel but in a house. Um, failure to provide electrical facilities, that's, that's been um, common, but the space heater thing is, is something that is, is tricky. Um, failure to provide adequate exits, the obstruction of an exit, um, you got a tenant that's leaving all kinds of trash in a hallway and someone can't get out their first floor door, you're responsible for it um, if the people on the other floors can't get out. Um, 
any, anybody who doesn't pay to get rid of their trash, any accumulation of um, refuse, filth, or other causes of sickness, it's on the landlord. Um, and even if, if your tenant, um, and I've, I have these situations in town right now, um, trashes the backyard, throw all kinds of crap in the backyard, I have to order you, um, the landlord, to clean it up. There's no provision to order the tenant to clean it up. And if the landlord doesn't want to clean it up, um, under the nuisance ordinance, it's $500 to $1,000 a day fine for every day that that um, stays there. Um, and this is a recent change. So, um, and that's what made me, made me want to think that there's a reason to have a, a, a local code that was minimal, that required a couple of inspections, and I, I felt that the inspections for heating, preheating season, to get in there and show that the heating season's in good condition, the oil tank's not leaking, we know who's paying for the heat, you know, it's been clearly decided. Um, we won't be going out at six o'clock on Sunday mornings and five o'clock at night on, on, on holidays because Summer note has no heat, and the landlord says he's not responsible, and the tenant says they're not responsible. We'll already know. And, and if the apartment's been registered, we have the contact for the landlord. If you want to give us a copy of the lease, we have that on file. If you feel like you don't want to give up your lease, um, you know, that really doesn't matter, but you'd, you would have to demonstrate who's responsible for the heat and who's responsible for those things when they run out. <laughs> And you're going to see in here, um, there's a lot of, of things that say provide protection for the tenants, provide protection for the tenants. So provide protections for the tenants that contact the Board of Health, request inspections, report any deficiencies in a rental property in a, from retaliation by the owner for exercising their legal rights. This is in the housing code. This is, um, this is not something we were adding to the local regulation but want to make the, the landlords aware of the fact that you're already responsible for this, and this is one of the reasons we want to, that I'm recommending um, these increased inspections, is to, to eliminate these deficiencies um, and to eliminate the feeling of a landlord that this person's being a pain in the butt and I want them out of here as fast as I can. Um, it's, it's unfortunate to see a family uh, get a 10-day notice to quit when there's no place to go um, because they had to report, you know, something wrong with their apartment. And I, and I truly believe that we get a fraction um, of some of the complaints because people already know that. They've, I hear from some of the tenants that, you know, this is their third apartment, this is their third bad landlord. Um, it's it's kind, of a, kind of a circuit of, of what's going on here. Um, and then to protect the owners from tenants that violate the provisions of the housing code and cause damage to property deliberately in an attempt to file false housing complaints and illegally withhold rent. And that's been a common theme, you know, through all of this is by having this inspection for heating season and, and for screen season, and I, I have no objection to dropping the screen season one, but I just, I've seen a lot of screens being punched out and it gives them a reason not to pay rent. Um, we have a few houses in town that people haven't paid rent since May of last year, and they're still living in their houses. I went to court um, a while ago for an eviction. I really thought that people were going to get evicted, and the judge told the people to find, find them a house. And, that, and if he couldn't fix the house in time, he was going to pay for that house until they found a house that they liked. Not that he liked, but that, but that they liked. Um, so to protect the owners from these tenants and, and these housing complaints, that inspection would be, would be very important in, in my mind and, and what I'm seeing. And then um, the housing code, 310 CM, 105 CMR 410 is the housing code. And it applies to all residences um, unless specified you know, elsewhere. And the state building code kicks in. Um, that involves the building inspector. Um, some of the fire code kicks in. Some of that involves the fire department. In the previous draft of this, there was going to be an inspection by the fire department and the building inspector at the same time. Based on comments that came in uh, when this first started, I took that out. 
All I really care about is what the Board of Health is responsible. I'm not going to worry about um, the, the building inspector and the fire department. If I can go in and, and see that the oil burn is good, we know who's paying all these things, um, you know, we're, we're fine. Um, and it's, it's the duty of the health agent to identify the violations and order corrections of these violations. And it's a legal, ob legal obligation of the person to whom the order is issued to comply with the order. So um, I've, I've approached this um, three different ways. Um, I went out to a, to a unit, actually where you saw that um, CO detector, and you saw the broken off light bulb and the common lighting in the hallway. I met that landlord out there, and we were going to do an inspection, and um, he had his maintenance people with him. I, I gave him the, the code about the electric door locks. Um, you also have to pay for the, for the electricity in the basements of these houses. Anything that's common, you have to pay for it. You have to have a separate electric meter for this now to pay for that. And um, I suggested to the owner of the property that rather than write an enforcement order, um, have him go back and, and review the housing code and come back in two weeks and, and meet with him in two weeks and, and see how he made out and, and you know, see what progress was being made. And I did that. And, and when I came back in two weeks, um, he had um, worked on the door locks. He had um, put up his notifications. He had put um, more lights in the basement. Um, he, was, he was on the road to getting there. And um, I talked to some of the tenants and I said, is it okay with you, um, you know, if we work this out with the tenant, with the owner, and we don't enforce, uh, write an enforcement order and, and see how this goes. And um, I can tell you that in, in the last two weeks, um, there's been a lot of progress. And, and that, you know, that guy's doing a good job. And, and the tenants are happy. Some plumbing fixtures have been replaced in the apartments. They didn't complain about, you know, other things were fixed. He's doing it. And, and I would prefer to, um, to give a landlord that opportunity because not every landlord um, has $14,000 in the bank to replace a boiler on, on no notice. And not every landlord has $7,000 to replace an electrical system because the, the wires were rotted out on the side of the house and, and had no notice. So to give everybody the chance to work it out amicably, hopefully the tenant gets to stay there and, and, and hopefully the, you know, the landlord fixes these things without writing orders and, and trying to issue penalties. Um, and every occupant of a rental unit upon reasonable notice um, and if possible by appointment shall give the owner um, and the owner's representative access to the residence for the purpose of affecting compliance. Some people will try and tell you that you can't come in for two weeks or you can't come in tomorrow. They don't want you in their apartments. And that turns into a bigger problem because you've received the order, um, you know, not the tenant. Um, access has to be at a reasonable time. I'm sure you all know that. Um, the tenant has to um, agree and cooperate with required repairs. I've had instances where a repairman shows up to do the repairs and they had just come short of getting assaulted um, and they wind up leaving because there's just so much bad blood um, you know, going on with the, with the violations there. Um, and an owner has to give 48 hours notice to the occupant um, except for emergency repairs where notice, no notice is required. And if, if the occupant won't give the landlord access, we can condemn the house. We can, we can make them, you know, leave the house, but it's going to be at, at the landlord's expense. It used to be at the town's expense. Um, and that's, that's just a, this whole thing has swung to the, to the tenant's side um, as far as expense to the, to the landlords. The authority to um, have this local um, housing regulation um, comes under Chapter 111, which is the Board of Health. Um, section 31. Um, it enables us to, to en enact reasonable local pu public health regulations. And I, I really think that um, having an inspection in the fall before heating season to make sure that everybody's covered um, is reasonable. It really is. Um, I'm not asking to go through people's apartments with a, 
a magnifying glass. Um, I'll tell you personally, I'm uncomfortable walking through people's apartments. I, I, I do feel like I'm, I'm, I'm invading their space, but it's something that you have to do. Um, but I, I am uncom uncomfortable doing it. Rights to a hearing. So um, the following person may request a hearing before the Board of Health by filing a written petition. And, and this gets a little tricky, too, because the Board of Health only meets once a month. So if you want to appeal something and there's going to be a hearing, you could be affected by, by waiting for, for, for a hearing for a month. Um, and I think that, once again, a simple inspection could head some of this stuff off. So any person or persons upon whom any order or notice has been served, and all affected persons, including your tenants, um, have, uh, have, have the right to um, file a petition. The petition must be filed within seven calendar days after the day the order was served, or the appeal is, is over. So if, if you don't appeal an order within seven days, the order stands. If the tenant um, doesn't, doesn't appeal an order within seven days, the order stands. Um, but this could turn into a, a whole bunch of problems for a three-member Board of Health that only meets once a month um, to start having a hearing. Um, you know, every seven days we have to go out doing an inspection and issue an order because someone uh, appeals it. And we've been through this with some restaurants. It was very difficult um, to meet those requirements. So, and then it talks about what the inspector has to do. So, if you're aggrieved by the failure of the inspector or anybody else on the Board of Health um, that we didn't inspect when you requested, um, you can petition um, within 30 days for an inspection. Um, we have to issue a, a report on inspections required, provided the petition has to be filed within 30 calendar days. So it's another 30 days. If they're going without heat, if they're going without lights, it, it, it could subject um, the landlord again um, to a lot of expense. And then if we find after an inspection um, violations of the Housing Code 105 CMR 410, when violations are claimed to exist or to certify that a violation or combination of violations may endanger or materially uh, impair the health or safety and well-being of the occupants of the premises, um, provided that the petition is filed within 30 calendar days after receipt of the inspection report, that we um, issue an order. And um, it's mandatory that the order be issued um, and that that has to be filed within 30 calendar days but it's mandatory. And then it's mandatory that we enforce the provisions of the Housing Code um, and provide the petition, and that has to be filed within 45 calendar days um, if it's under Chapter 127, which aren't priority, priority violations. These are minor violations. They're not health and safety violations. Um, and then there's an opportunity for um, landlords to apply for a variance. So say you have an apartment. Um, that three quarters of the, that basement apartment isn't seven feet, the ceiling's not seven feet, but you want to apply for a variance and it's six feet eight inches or six feet five inches, you can apply for a variance. And, and the Board of Health, um, you know, can grant that variance. But if you don't have a variance and a tenant finds out you don't have that variance, it becomes a reason not to pay rent. And, and we, we have a situation right now where there's a basement apartment, it was given building permits, it had electrical permits, there's been a tenant in it for three years, but it has a six-foot ceiling. And um, the house was inspected um, in 2022 by um, one of our regional um, inspectors, and the order from that inspector was to raise the basement ceiling to seven feet. And I don't know how you do that. Uh, I, 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 I thought that was ridiculous. There was a reinspection of that same apartment in 2023, and the comment from the regional inspector was the ceiling height still isn't seven feet. But there was it was never an offer or never an order that the, the landlord could apply for a variance um, for that six feet. And this is another case um, where the tenant was withholding rent. 
there were some other things wrong with the apartment and she was going to be evicted and rather than write an enforcement order to the owner I talked to the owner and the tenant and I asked the landlord if he fixed um, the back door to the basement and he took the tenant on the second floor's electricity off of her meter and this, this is common in a lot of buildings there are other people's electricity on some people's meters would she be happy with the six foot ceiling and um, after a little discussion she said yes you know she'd be happy with the six foot ceiling um, so that's an alternative to somebody becoming homeless and, and these are two disabled vets um, one's a Marine Corps um, Vietnam vet I contacted the town's um, veterans agent to see if there was something we could do for them because they were in the middle of the eviction process and um, there's nothing the veteran services can do for these folks there's nowhere for them to go so the best thing to do here was to broker a deal um, you know not issue that and and have them go for the variance and I, I think that's exactly what's going to happen that's you know in progress now so the hearing notices um, everything has to go in writing the date the time the place um, again our right to inspect um, anyone can come in and see our files concerning that matter see past inspection records you know see what's happened in the past if you're a landlord and something like this happens you should absolutely want to see previous inspections maybe you didn't get a copy of them the town didn't have a health inspector you know here locally for a year a hey, year and a half a year yeah so this was all being done by by others um, from outside of town um, and if and if you don't re file a written petition for hearing um, then the hearings waived and you know and that's the end of that and, and there's some time periods here that everybody has to keep in mind because it's a shame to let something go by for seven days um, and find out that you've just lost because you didn't know you're entitled to a hearing so um, this was important to, to point out the rights against retaliation so this is in the housing code it's already there this is not new to um, to this regulation just trying to make the landlords aware that because someone complains um, you need to be really really careful about raising the rent or issuing a notice to quit because it will get picked up in the housing court or a, a tenant's going to say you know I'm, I'm being retaliated against and it, it could turn into um, I, I have a person um, who did this in another town and, and a judge um, gave them six months to stay in that apartment rent free. The landlord had nothing to say about it. Six more months, no rent. Um, so be careful. Um, your actions need to be um, you know, deliberate and necessary. Um, and and the, again, the burden's on the landlord, not the tenant, um, to prove that the tenancy is being changed for other reasons, you know, rather than them um, bringing their rights in. And, and um, the courts, from what I'm seeing in housing court now, are very sympathetic to the tenants. Very sympathetic to the tenants. So the owner of a non-owner occupied residential property with two or more units. Um, we would like you to file an electronic application to register your apartment. Register your apartment with the Board of Health so that we know you have two or more units, we know who you are, we know what your phone number is, and if something's going on, we can get in touch with you right away. Um, I have no contact with the um, assessor or the town clerk to try and get any of that information on a Friday night or a Saturday night or a Sunday or a holiday. Um, the woman that ripped out all the gas lines in her house couldn't come home for four days but we couldn't contact her landlord she got let out of the hospital and went back to her house and the landlord was calling me finally asking you know what we could do there's nothing we could do that this was this was his problem but now he had a person that got out of the hospital and was back in the house she never should have got back into the house um, and had we been able to get a hold of the landlord that could have been prevented um, and then um, I'm asking that before any non-owner occupied rental unit be occupied that no occupancy permit be issued without inspection so that there's an inspection before the tenant moves in and everybody agrees 
that, that everything's right. Um, and, and the apartment passed inspection when you moved in. And if it doesn't pass inspection a month later and you don't want to pay your rent, well, I'm, 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 I'm advocating for the landlord. I'm not advocating for the tenant. Um, unless it's, you know, the oil burner burst or the hot water tank burst. But kitchen cabinets are on floors. Sinks have hammer marks in them where somebody hit it with a hammer. Um, those are some of the things that are, that are um, happening. Um, the occupancy permit can be revoked by the Board of Health after a public hearing um, for noncompliance um, or violations from the local regulation. But that's true under the, under the code. This, this is a housing code already there. I just put it there so that it was visible a second time. You, 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 forewarned is fair warned um, in, in my book. And then for the local um, requirements, to have the Board of Health inspect and verify that the building and common spaces meet the sanitary code. You have lights, they turn on automatically or they stay on all the time. If you've got um, more than two units, the door's an automatic closing door and it, and it has an electronic lock. Um, and then to inspect and verify that the apartment and common spaces um, met the code twice a year. And there's been a lot of comments that people thought that was ex excessive. Um, I, don't, I don't know that it's excessive, but if you, I, I don't see that the, the, the screen inspection, and that's the reason for the second inspection in the screen, in the fall, in the spring. It's more about screens because it's a, it's a big deal and people do damage the screens to, to say they don't want to pay their rent. Um, no owner shall allow a person to occupy, offer to rent or occupy any rental unit which was not, does not comply with the requirements of the housing code. That's the six foot ceiling. That's the shared oil tank. That's the shared electric meter. I did an inspection um, recently and when the landlord um, showed me the garage, um, there was a body shop in the garage that he was renting out for $500 a month. And when I asked him where that electric was, it was on the third floor meter. And I knew that because it was in the 2023 inspection. And I said, this was in the 23 inspection. He said, yeah, I've, I, I haven't had time. So um, he, he got an order to take care of that in 72 hours because two, uh, two years is, is plenty of time. Um, and then having something being occupied um, before a certificate of compliance is a risk um, in my book to the landlord because people can start finding things wrong. It's like buying a used car and having that buyer's remorse. You drive that car for a week and things start to go wrong and you, and you start to say, gee, I, you know, I wish I took a closer look. Um, it would be good to have the Board of Health take a closer look and make sure that you, the landlord, are protected and that the tenant's protected in case some of these things are wrong. The application, yeah, you'd file an application um, with the Board of Health for a certificate of compliance. Um, for each non-owner occupied rental unit. And um, you'd fill out the entire application, upload it, it would be electronic, and pay the fee. So the registration fee per building for two units or more, now it's not $100 a unit, it's $100 to register your building. And that's, my, that's what I'm recommending for a fee. The board can raise that, they can lower that, they can eliminate that, whatever they want to do. I didn't think $100 was a lot, but there's been a lot of comments um, about that $100. So, um, and then the semi-annual inspection um, would be $100. That was my recommendation. Um, once again, there's been a lot of comments about that. And when you folks get to discuss this with the board, I'm sure they'll be taking that into uh, consideration too. Change in occupancy. And this is a very important time um, for an inspection. When there's been a change in occupancy, somebody moves out, they're not happy about moving out, and they, and they do sneaky things on the way out. Um, I've seen people pour concrete down toilets just to, just to give it to the landlord on the way out door. I saw a person who took the hot air um, vents apart in the, in the basement and put fish inside the, inside the vents and put the vents back together and the house filled up with flies and they couldn't figure out where the flies were coming from. So um, I had recommended $100. 
we can be allowed to, to talk about that. Um, once the board votes on the regulation, if they vote to, um, to accept it, it becomes effective immediately um, as a regulation. And uh, pre-existing non-owner occupied rental units um, would have until September 15th of 2024 to register. That's a suggestion. And to obtain um, a rental unit certificate of compliance. That's the suggestion. Any vacant rental units or non-compliant rental units as of the effective date of this regulation shall apply, um, shall obtain a certificate of compliance within 30 days of any violation or prior to allowing occupancy. It's currently in the code, and, and this is um, what I used for my tool to sa salvage the eviction at the six-foot ceiling was I informed the apartment owner that I could order him not to rent that apartment anymore once it was vacated. So once you, once you evict that tenant who has been agreeable with that six-foot ceiling, you can no longer rent that apartment until you raise it to seven feet. And that was the catalyst for him agreeing because he's getting $1,050 for that apartment with the six-foot ceiling. And that would be $1,050 he was no longer going to collect. Um, but once that tenant moves out, um, he's going to need to get a variance. So um, any owner occupied rental property with two or more units, owner occupied, is exempt from this regulation. So if you're an owner occupied building with two, three, four, five, six units, you're exempt. You live there, you have to live with it, you have to deal with the people. Um, you know, you've got a duplex, you live in one side. Um, I, I grew up in a duplex. Um, houses were kept better back then. And, and we have a lot of rental units in town that are businesses, not just, um, you know, residents who have an apartment or, or bought the house next door because it's, they got a deal and they rent it out. These people don't live in town. They, they live quite a ways away and um, they really don't care. And that's it. That's what I, that's what I have to say. Um, has, everybody, has everybody had a chance to actually see the regulation? I mean, the last slides were the regulation. It's only, um, it's only four pages, one-sided, and it's 14-point type. Um, if, would you like me to read it? They were posted on Facebook. Yeah, they're on Facebook. Oh, no. Okay, great. I don't want <laughs> So you can take comments if you want to take comment. Or I can you take questions. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, you said the part of the new code is that with each lease, if the tenant is responsible for the oil, the gas, the electric, rubbish. or the rubbish, it it has to be a separate notation from just them signing the lease? It, it has to be in the lease. In the lease. But then there has to be a separate notation that they accept that. Okay, thank you. So that's something so they could say they didn't miss it. Folks, we're still in the meeting. Thank you. Some, some tenants have said, I, I would say, do you, is it in your lease that you pay for the oil? I don't know. But if you signed a separate statement, you, you would know. Okay. Yeah. So, that takes the I didn't see it away. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, and that's from the housing code. That's yep. not from us. No, I yeah. understand that. And the inspection within 24 hours, um, you have to respond and set up an inspection within 24 hours. That's a comment that's provided that, like, the tenant can't say to you, oh, I can't meet till next week, Thursday, but oh, you didn't meet the 24 hours. Correct. But again, this is from the housing code. Correct. Not but, I mean, our. correct. And that's why I'm just making sure that we, it's, it's housing code, but it has yep. to be. And I, I have had um, plenty of um, complaints where there's something wrong with the heat or something wrong with the electricity. I ask to inspect the apartment, and they say yes. And then 10 minutes before inspecting the apartment, I, I get the, I'm sick today. I'll call you back when I'm better. And, and it never comes in. And what do you do about something like that? Do you just document it? Do you? Do I you document it. I send I send them a, a an email or or in some cases a text message. Yep. And say you know let me know when you're ready. But most of these apartments, um, 
the people are accepting the conditions inside the apartment, there's just problems with the heating system or electric system that, that could have been avoided. Okay. Um, so you had um, mentioned one of the things was to provide a copy of each lease or rental agreement to the Board of Health. That, I understand for the oil and things like that, but that can be done, that's up to the landlord if they want. We could make that, that it, that's not part of the housing code. That's, that's something that you were suggesting for our local requirements. And only, only that because then I would, I would be able to see, did the tenant agree to, to pay, pay for, for these things? Right, and I understand and if, the importance of and that. And if landlords wanted to redact what the rent is, I, I have no problem with redactions. I just want to know, um, did, did the tenant know? Okay. Uh, let's see. One of the things was to provide proof of liability to the insurance of insurance to the Dudley Board of Health, um, and then to list the town of Dudley as an additional insured. I don't know if that was on the new one or the that was on the original that one. Was on the original. So I you took, took that out. out. That's I what I wanted to make sure. Out. Thank you. Yep. Um, no, da, 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 da. Based on the comments, that that didn't make yep. any sense. Yep. No problem. That's, I'm just going through. Yep. These were all my notes from. So that was in the original that's out now? That's out. Yep. So that's that's something that's required from businesses in town that, you know, someone from the public could get hurt. We've given them a license to be open. Um, they indemnify the town and they provide us as an additional insured. So I added that into it after I saw the comments from some of the residents. It made sense. The, you know, why would you want to go through that? It's not even possible now. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not an insurance man. Not possible. So. Not possible. Right. Well, it's not required. Pat, we're going to let Jen continue. Then we'll yeah. open it up. Was it to put we'll, it in here in the first place. We're going to open it up to all of you in a minute. We're just going to let Jen finish, okay? So you had it. Excuse me? Thank you. The owner's fees, um, I have concerns about the prices. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that, and the re my, back, my reasoning is that First, we're Dudley. We're a small town, smaller town. Yep. Second, this is something new. So I think that we should start on a smaller scale. And this is just my opinion. I just think we should start on a smaller scale, maybe like the application fee per build. Um, you said it's per building. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is So they registered their building with us, the, or their buildings, building or buildings, and it would be like a $25 fee to begin with because... I mean, if you, you know, you think some, you can tell me why. This is just, I'm just starting saying, okay, you know, let's start with that, see where we go. Um, I'm just reading through. Um, I like the idea. So I, I looked around, I read other towns, I contacted other towns to see what they do so that I could see what else was going on and mm -hmm. everything. I like the idea of, an inspection, a special, <coughs> let us put it this way. My, I really like the idea of a common area inspection mm -hmm. because I think the, not a good percentage, over 50% of the complaints are from the common area. <coughs> Be it yes. no locks on the doors, no posting of um, land, landlord information or property manager information no lights in the common area or the lights are being paid for by another apartment no lights in the um, laundry area down in the basement or one light bulb correct yes. or one light bulb or everybody has their own light bulb or something where these should all be taken care of <coughs> by the landlord i think when you do a common area inspection you also are going to do a visual inspection of the outside so you see the trash, you see if screens are there or not, you know, depending on time of year. You also, if you're in the basement, you see if there's an oil tank, if there's one, how many, what, and then you know. So I, I think that's. And that's where you get to peel back the onion and make sure that someone's not being forced to share an oil tank with someone on the second floor. Right, and that that's important because I do think a lot of we do have complaints of apartments as well, but I think that a lot of that is important because that's the areas that get overlooked a lot, I think, just from mm -hmm. past complaints and everything. Um, I also, you know, I did see a lot of people questioning about invading <coughs> uh, 
tenants being upset with people going into the, you know, having inspections and multiple inspections. And so I don't know, maybe we start with doing a common area inspection on a routine rather than inspecting each apartment. But then let me finish, <laughs> hear me out more. <laughs> um, Did my so, eyes get bigger? <laughs> <laughs> so then, but now if you have a landlord who, okay, so a tenant moves out. If you have a landlord who wants the Board of Health to inspect that apartment for, mm -hmm. you know, like free, free rental, we'll say, you know, if you have a landlord who says, oh, I'd like the Board of Health to document everything's right with this apartment prior to somebody moving in. Or even just to verify. Right. That's the side that I'm looking at. I figured that's something that we could definitely, you know, you could do. But again, that would be at a request of the landlord, not make that's it fine. mandatory. Yeah. And have it be, I don't know, $25 fee, $10 fee, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just trying to, it's a lot on the landlords, the, the housing code, it's a lot on the landlords. It is now. It, yeah, the, yes. with the new housing code, it's put a lot more onto the landlords. And I want to, we're there to protect the tenant, but we're also there to protect the landlord. And that's why I did this. Right. Yes. Because I don't want, some, like I didn't know the new housing code was there. So that if you if someone if your apartment's not habitable you have to put them up in an Airbnb something that's comparable. I mean that's crazy. That's crazy, and that a judge actually did it. That's what blows my mind all the more. Yes, a judge in Dudley. So that that okay. Um, so and then some of my other. Um, bear with me, the inspection. Mm -hmm. e Request inspections. Obviously, if the tenant has a complaint, they can call in and we would gladly do the inspection. Now, if we go out and there's a complaint and you speak with the landlord, like, you know, I know you try to work with the landlord prior to hitting the, you know, hitting them hard. You make that, but, but the landlord doesn't know about that first inspection if the complaint comes from a tenant. Correct. So we would be notifying the landlord so of this. You're notifying the, ten the landlord afterwards that you've done an inspection. Okay. So if you ordered them to correct things and then you went out for a reinspection and the items were not corrected, could you charge a reinspection fee? You could. The problem is, is some, most of these these violations that we that we bump into have a mandatory 72-hour repair, <laughs> and then a penalty kicks in. Okay, so we don't have to even worry about that. That's something different yeah. through the but, housing code. But in my mind, some of these things can't be fixed in 72 hours. Mm -hmm. There's not always an electrician available no. in 72 hours. No. There's not always an oil burner available in 72 hours. And that's a, you know, that's a reason to make sure that these systems are in you know, better condition. Right, and they'll protect themselves. Yes. Innocent. Okay. Um. This time, yeah, the questions that I have right now, unless I think of something else. Okay. Yep. Do you have a question? I, no, I don't think so. Not right now. So you can open up. To All right. So we can open this up to anyone who wants to come up. You can either come up to the podium or the table, but just please state your name and your address, please. I heard some comments out there. Nobody wants to come up. There we go. Hi, Jim Chaprari, Lions Road. A um, couple of questions. Are you prepared to make a decision on this tonight, or when are you going to make the decision? Yeah. Yeah. You need a quorum? Or we have a quorum. Yeah. You have a quorum? Yeah. Okay. And in reference to that, have you made your decision, or are you going to listen to the people that are here? I haven't no. made a decision. Yeah, no. Okay. I had questions. The first time I saw the PowerPoints. And has this board communicated with any other boards in reference to the impact? I mean, we have a proposed $46 million um, mill that's going to be developed. And based on how this was originally presented with 
liability insurance, which is basically impossible. I checked with my agent and the carrier. Um, if you did the math on your original proposal. But the original proposal is okay, gone. Okay, well, that's so, all yeah. we had to go on based Correct. on what was publicized. But it was about a $50,000 a year Correct. bottom line effect. And if you impose anything on landlords and don't, like you would normally do with taxes, give them a break, you're not going to find a developer. So the Economic Development Committee is kind of useless because no one's going to want to come into our community because there's a lot of towns that have a lot of old mills that they could go develop without this. So That's why it was a draft, and that's why we were having okay. a public hearing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So th this revised um, model was put on the town website on yep. March 19th. Okay. Yep. So it was, it was updated almost a month ago. And if you do, and I don't, because I've read what I read and heard what I heard, what would happen if a tenant refused to let you into their apartment? You get an administrative search warrant. Okay. No. If you had to. So having, having said that. What did, what did you just say? If, if you had to, you would get an administrative search warrant. Okay, you, so having you, said. Well, let me ask you one question. Just to, just to answer this apples for apples. I'm assuming that you're asking, you're a landlord. I am. Okay, and you want your, you want your apartment inspected, but the tenant I don't need my apartment inspected. I know how to run my business. Okay. Okay, so I have no reason to force an inspection on an apartment. But that's not what was in writing. It was in writing that it was $100 to sign up. It was $100 twice a year to check my screens and my heating system. Yep. Which is two hundred dollars. It's just a draft. It's, it's just a draft. draft. Okay. We, we right, haven't what finalized anything. That's all we so, had to go on. Didn't you right. Vote on something it, if nobody knows it, what it is. It was publicized. It was publicized. We publicized it. You did. You publicized what, yeah. what I'm what I'm reciting. So the point is. And as Pat stated, the new updated one was published put out on the website back on March 19th. Okay, well you didn't know that either because you no, asked them about the liability insurance. Because I've been working off the old one at home okay. and I don't, Just I, as he I'm hasn't sure. updated us. Yeah. Okay, so that's what I was working off yep. of, same as you, yep. and the liability insurance was totally unreasonable and I can see why, but um, why the town would want the protection. So now having said that, will there be an opt-out feature? If tenant and landlord sign something saying that they're not interested we're doing fine. Is there an opt-out feature? It's not a bad idea. Okay. That's, we'll take that into consideration, absolutely. Okay. It's not a bad idea. No. Okay. Um, the other question would be, if in fact, I guess I need reiteration, what would happen if the tenant doesn't want you in? If there's been a complaint. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I'm not talking a complaint. I'm talking your twice a year inspections to inspect the, quote, screens and the, quote, heating system? Well, I don't need to go in their apartment to look at the furnace in the basement, and I don't need to go in their apartment to look at the screens. So I'm basing it on the prior meeting that I listened to where you were justifying the $100 fees each time mm -hmm. so that time-wise it was going to take an extensive amount of time to do these inspections based on your words at the prior meeting, yeah. and that's why it was $100, and you didn't feel that the landlord should not be responsible for that and the town shouldn't be responsible so that's why the fees were assessed what about our tax dollars that we pay for these hold buildings? on one second so based if everybody would not talk from the audience there has to be minutes of this meeting so one at a time mm -hmm. based on the feedback from that that's why that was changed and that's why i went to each member individually and said you can set the i i only made a recommendation I don't vote. They could make it zero if they want to make it zero. They could make it five dollars if they want to make it five dollars. All I care about. You recommended the hundred, 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 hundred. That's the number I picked. I picked that from the air. It didn't seem like a, a, a big deal. And and in from municipal. Experience. But hold on. But in municipal government, you have to cover the cost of what you're going to do. And it doesn't cost fifteen dollars to go out to do an inspection. So, well, so in my mind, I was thinking that it would be fair to all of the taxpayers if landlords paid a fee, because otherwise, all of the taxpayers in Dudley are financing the inspections of rental properties. That was my logic in that. I've heard um, Jen. She lives here. I don't live here. She thinks that the fee's high. Um, after getting the feedback, I agree. It, it doesn't matter to me. 
So um, I think you're going to get some, um, some, you know, some good relief on the fee. I've already said that I don't know that the, that the spring inspection is, is that important based on the feedback that I've gotten emails, I've gotten text messages, um, they've gotten phone calls, contact from the public, um, and that's why everybody's here is to you know, listen to all of this and come out with something that works for everybody. Because I, I attempted to, I did leave a message for um, the board, never received a call, left a message for the town administrator and the personnel director, who is one of the same, never heard back. So with all due respect, I mean, a little bit of respect in the phone call um, is, is, would be appreciated. Can I ask you, did you call the Board of Health? I office? did, and I left okay. a message with Thank Amanda. Thank you, I'll look into that. I left a message with Amanda, and I asked okay. for any board member to please give me a call. Okay, so I can explain to you why I wouldn't call you back, and I, I don't, I'm not going to speak for Roe, but I, we, hadn't, we haven't made any decisions. The updated I just had questions when this was originally initiated and the original one came out. Oh, I apologize because this I knew was a draft, so we were going to be, I was going to be marking it all up and changing things that I didn't like with it. Now, whatever the rest of the board decides, that's up to them, but that's why I was, I would only be giving you my opinion. And you said you did some research yourself yep. and made some phone calls. How many communities in Massachusetts have implemented this regulation? I don't know how many communities. I can tell you what surrounding towns have. I can tell Do they you have this regulation? Southbridge has a regulation. Chal I don't know. It they have a housing regulation. I did read through it quickly. No, no, but do they have this stringent mass one with additional yes. local requirements? Yes, yes. <laughs> Southbridge has local requirements. Chowton has local requirements. Um, Oxford was working on the last time I talked to them. I did not talk to Webster. I did never got a chance to reach out to Webster. I do know what Worcester's doing because it's been publicized everywhere. So I did look around the towns to see what was going on and what was being done because I wanted to see what else was going on. Madam Chair. And have So if I could just the, this stringent Massachusetts regulation applies to every city and town in Massachusetts right now. The housing code. The housing code applies to every city and town in Massachusetts right now. Okay. Yeah. So I heard a number of 50 something as because you've only been here since December oh, yeah. what what has the actual numbers been in prior years with complaints from either landlords or tenants what are the numbers mm -hmm. uh, they come directly, directly to your office correct I, I'm, I don't work to the Board of Health yes they go directly to the Board of Health office I can tell you in the past on average I looked back over the past two years to see there is a ton of housing complaints on average there's going to be 15 to 20 a year at least okay and it's a year. <laughs> a year excuse me you might not think that that's that's a lot but when you have an agent going back and forth for months over a housing complaint it's a lot it's a lot the town how many apartments do you have in Dudley Cure? That I don't know the exact number. I apologize. Uh, we, we don't know. So we don't know the number of apartments. Yet, I don't know offhand. Yet it was proposed that he's going to go into each one on re-rent, and he's going to go into them twice a year on proposal. Which was, that's why I correct. I so that's that's three. A so whatever the number is. Twenty-four hour notice. Or Sorry, you know what? This is off. getting a little out of hand. Right, so so uh, listen, can I just speak? Okay, yeah, sir. Absolutely. I understand you're all very heated. This is upsetting for a lot of you. But th this was just the draft, okay. okay, that Jen and I and Heather's not here to look at. And tonight we're talking about it. Nothing is written in stone. We appreciate your concerns. I, we do. We well, want to hear it all. But, it's very impactful. Oh, okay. yes. but, but did you hear us say yes to anything yet? No. no. So I think I would appreciate, I don't want to speak for her, if maybe you guys wouldn't beat us up a little bit. Because I've read the stuff on Facebook. I've listened to the, e I've read the emails. I've heard it all. And it's, it's upsetting to us because we just want to try to do a little bit better. And we're, this is the first time that we've had a chance to sit down and actually discuss discuss this with all of you and I think with a lot of other. people respect you as board members because so, you you are elected and you're volunteering your time but it needs to be in the best interest of the and, and that is why we're here that, that is exactly here. what we want to do and the, absolutely and, and there are a lot of questions and I'll be honest 
There were questions published on Facebook. Yeah, that was yep. me. I put those up, and I appreciate that Great. because Very these yeah, questions. Read them. These questions are pertinent to everybody mm -hmm. that runs and owns. I owned a business in town for 30 years. Very successful business, and I have property in town. And when somebody questions that, and it was said, quote, if it's an owner, owner occupied res, uh, tenant building, okay, pride in ownership. Really? Pride in ownership if you live there? You don't have to go check. That doesn't mean that they're not going to be messing with people with heat and stuff. I'll tell you what, I have apartments, he has apartments, and a lot of these people have apartments. And you know what? Pride in ownership. We're in Dudley. We're not in the city. These people have pride in ownership. We don't violate the laws, and we abide by them. We aren't being taken to court and questioned. We all have integrity. We all have integrity. And that's what my... That's a big thing. Integrity is a big thing. And, and that's exactly what I meant. Yeah. That's exactly what well, I meant. Uh, I guess... I have a lot of questions, and I'm going to let other people get up because I don't want to take it over. But I can provide you with a copy of this, which I'm sure you've seen on social media, yep. and I have a copy for anybody else. But I will say, integrity goes a long way, and reputation is paramount. Okay? And a leopard doesn't change its spots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, no, I'll, I have them. Thank maybe you. Maybe I can take it down a little bit. Uh, Ted Zukowski, 27 Sunset Drive. I own a building on Oxford Ave, and it is five units. I live a mile from my home, from my home to my apartment building. And I take a lot of pride in it, like the gentleman said. And a lot of us live in town, and we own our property in town because we're neighbors. We we rent to our friends' friends. We rent to our friends' children. We take a lot of pride in what we're doing. There are people that own in town that uh, don't live here. And I know who they are. And I served on the board. I worked for the board. I worked for the town. Um, and where I appreciate you suggesting you're going to look out for us and uh, pre-inspect our, our property, um, I take pictures, I take videos. I'm speaking for me personally. I bet a lot of these people here have pictures, videos uh, of their units pre-rental, post-rental. I suggest to my tenants they do the same, take pictures, take videos. I don't need you to come in and, and oversight. I don't need it. I, I don't want to have to pay you to do that either. Uh, if you're going to insist that you're going to come into my home, I, and I consider it my home, it's five units, it's mine, I own it, I take pride in it, it's my home. I don't live in it, but maybe I'll change my address to that place because I'd live there. And if I change my address to there, then you won't inspect it. But let's say someone in town owns a six family. It's commercial, it's not residential anymore. And if they live in it, they're living in a commercial property. And if you want to inspect apartments, then you should be inspecting six family only because whether it's owner occupied or not, it's commercial space. Um, so I'm talking both sides. I'm talking in your defense. I'm talking as someone who used to sit up there. Um, the number of apartments in this town, and, and, and I'm going off the top of my head. I did a quick search. There's about 200. If there are 200 build, excuse me, buildings, if there are 200 apartment buildings in this town and each one has three, there's 600 apartments. Uh, I think at a former meeting you might have said it would take you about an hour. That's per unit to do a pre-inspection. That's 600 hours. And if you're going to do that twice a year, it's going to take you a month um, of 40 hour weeks. And how many people are you planning to hire? Um, I, I will uh, I will tell you as board there will be there is no budget to hire anyone else there will be no hiring just to, <laughs> right. to rest assured and a lot of people have been saying you're looking to pay your salary you don't need you don't need to charge us to pay your salary I understand that's just not realistic um, you did say a few things here in your presentation that that uh, I did not know uh, good for you thank you for enlightening me on that 
Um, but I do have um, uh, the number. Yeah, with me. I'm looking for more of a conversation. If you guys have anything to say to what I'm saying, I appreciate your input. Um, my suggestion, uh, and I've gone over this all, and, and I've mentioned Southbridge. Southbridge has a, a, um, a building department, um, not Board of Health inspection. Uh, the town of Southbridge, the last time they did an inspection, because I do own there as well. Uh, it was a five-year inspection. They have no staff. They had to bring someone in from Boston in order to do the inspection. It didn't go as well as they planned. It took forever. And then the permits, and then the re-inspections, and the fire department, and the oversight that just happened from one inspection. You guys are going to be so wrapped up in red tape if you go at everyone for a screen and a lock and a hinge and a self-closing hinges and whatnot, um, I would feel for you. And I don't think you could staff it. Um, my suggestion would be, um, and it's just little me, uh, a five-year inspection with a $100 fee per building. Um, you can look at common hallways and um, smoke detectors and heating systems and, and whatever you want to look at. You're always driving around town. Tenants know their rights. Tenants know if they have to complain about something. And to say, hey, this guy had oil, his oil burner went out and he didn't replace it. Shame on that landlord that you're talking about. He's a lousy landlord. He's awful. Thank you. I think that's what these regulations are about. But we're not, not awful. Ted, we're not you, awful. sir. No one has said that. I, we're not awful. I, we're not saying no. that at no. all. What we're trying to propose is no, for those res right. those landlords who are not. And I think most of you are probably the ones who are not the ones who we have right, problems with. Right, we all live with. in town. We're all, right. we're town people. So, I mean, I, this was, this, this article in the paper was really hurtful to your cause because mm -hmm. it, it just went on and on. And I'm talking about the initial one for the housing code. I'm sorry, I'm not talking about anything about anyone's, just the one Thank about the, the proposed housing. It, it, it uh, just puts so much information and it puts so much fear and anxiety mm -hmm. in all of us. And here we are right now. And I'd rather talk. I'd rather talk to you on this level than have anyone coming at you just and I, in an we attack. I don't want to attack you. No, and we appreciate all the input. And I trust me, we read through all the Facebook posts. At least I know I did. Yeah. Sorry, I shouldn't. Speak. Hey, I bet it's I entertainment. It's great. It's great <laughs> entertainment. And um, you know, it, there's a lot to consider in this. It's a huge thing. It uh, really is. My, my opinion is that, a, that a, an inspection, five years, even if it's two years, something on that, on, unless you have a complaint. If you have a complaint, then you have some validity to, to for, do a further inspection or ask or request and say, hey, I want to see all your units. I think you have the right to do that, maybe. I don't know. We do. Um, but uh, my tenants aren't going to complain only because they're my family, they're my friends. I consider them friends, yeah, yeah. and I think great. a lot of us do. Mm -hmm. um, my other, my other, uh, I will close with. Uh, please don't vote tonight. Yeah. If you would uh, tell me that you won't vote tonight, you're missing a member, you're missing your clerk, and you haven't had time to look at it. I would like to see your final product so that it can be commented on. I know you don't want to have to do this again, but the, I think it's necessary. If I may, mm -hmm. the problem with is that. If she's here next month, she can't participate in this because she was not here for the public hearing. So it's it's unfortunately two members. Um, basically, what happens is during a, during I don't know what's going to happen tonight. I don't know I don't know what Rose's opinion is. I have no idea. Um, I still would like to hear from everybody else. And if we can put something together, I, I don't know what will happen. I don't. She, I, I don't. So I don't know. Sorry. Well, I'd hope to see a copy of it before it, it, it's voted on so that at least we could take a look. Thank you. You're welcome. Tony D. Donato, Wayne Ave. I'm really confused at this point. 
you going to take a vote tonight on something? Mm -hmm. But none of us knows what that something is, basically. We, we will be discussing it mm -hmm. later on. But, but, we don't, but we're not going to see it in black and white. And, and to not see it in black and white and to have your vote on it, it just it doesn't feel right. It wouldn't be in black and white. So it would be final, would it? Could I, could I, Go could ahead. I make a I suggestion? Mean, yeah. Can we table this? Let me see. There's already been some good comments. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And I, I, I do think it would be, you're the board, but it would, it would be premature to mold on it tonight. Yeah, I, 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 so my question to I, you is that. I like your idea of um, spreading the inspections out, but I, I, I don't know who the last gentleman was that spoke, but Ted, Ted? Um, yeah. he had some even better ideas. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that that's worth sleeping on and but i'd like to hear from oh absolutely some more people you know this this started as a good idea to cure a complaint problem but as you get the rest of the story because i only come in people i only come in contact with people that have problems i only come in contact with people that don't have heat don't have electricity jammed up plumbing their rubbish hasn't been picked up for two months all of those things I haven't gotten to see the other side of this. So it's valuable information to hear from folks here. And if, and if you have some valuable information, enlighten us, because it, it will be helpful. So Pat, can I ask a question? Yeah. So we, we're, this is a public hearing, so this is when everybody gets to comment on everything. Yeah. So the public hearing would have to remain open. You could continue the public hearing. Right. Yeah. But, so would we have anything in writing? So what we would do is, is continue the public hearing. Yeah. And but I'd like to hear from more people. Oh, I'm, no, I'm not saying any, I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I'm just, yeah. I'm just and then, trying to get and the whole. Based af, after Amanda does the minutes. Yep. Yeah. You folks can't, can't meet. No. We can't what? Say that again? I can talk to you one on one. Right. But you folks can't, can't do that. No. Correct. We've, we've got a month before another meeting. And let's let's see what we what we come up with. This, this was a Perfect. a reaction to a situation that's going on in town. Seems like a good idea to, to someone who's only seen one side of the spectrum. Obviously, there's a much bigger sure. spectrum, um, but there is a requirement for for something here. Um, but I, I I think it would be premature to vote tonight. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify. So. Hi. Hi. My name's Susan Niles. I don't live here anymore, but I did inherit property. Um, and I've been renting for a while now. And I'm really just going off what I read in the paper and what I've heard um, from people who live here. Um, and when I first heard the suggestions, um, something didn't sound right to me it, it, and I'm coming at it from a legal point of view and uh, uh, specifically the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution and um, Article 14 of the Massachusetts bylaws um, guard against unlawful searches and seizures without an extraordinary reason of harm um, it would be an unlawful search for the government simply to intrude upon your privacy by entering your home. It is a question of privacy rights and the reasonable expectations of privacy that would be destroyed by allowing a health inspector access for no compelling reason, emergency reason. A person has a reasonable expectation of privacy within their home under Massachusetts law, the Fourth Amendment, and the article in the Article 14 of the Massachusetts Declaration of Rights. That's all I have to say. I mean, uh, it's, consti it, it's a constitutional is issue as well as uh, an issue. Thank you. Thank you. Any tenants? Here?
Could you ask? Could you ask? No, that's the one in the back. Oh, sure. Hi there, uh, Mark Marziotti, 50 Lake View Ave. Um, my wife and I own um, six buildings in Dudley, have since 2002, and have never had the Board of Health come to any of my buildings, um, thankfully. Well, I know that's not going to happen because I take pride in the buildings and, um, and, and do the things that are supposed to be done. I also um, and I'm, I'm a member of the Economic Development Committee, and I'm also um, a 15-year past member of the Planning Board. So I'm pretty involved in the town. Um, I'd like to tell you that um, it sounds like the plan or the program that you guys have currently going on, like if there's a problem, someone calls, and you take care of it. Um, I'm going to ask you, Jen, um, you said that there were, I forget how many complaints, but those complaints, I wonder how many of those were repeat offenders, how many were the same landlord that continues to you know, not do the things that they're supposed to do, don't keep their properties up. I could tell you that there's yeah. probably off the top of my head, and again, I don't work in the office, but I hear of the complaints over the course of years, yeah. and I can tell you, Ted can probably back me up, 15 to 20 landlords that you hear all the time. Okay. And There you go. And, I, and that's, and believe me, the intention yeah. is to, to we, I know you're, I, again, I know that the majority here are good landlords. I know, yeah. I've never had a complaint with your yeah. name on it, you know. I don't expect a bad landlord to be here, but I yeah. think it's important to know that the facts don't lie, right? So, you know, the, the, the tenants, unfortunately, the tenants are, who are being treated poorly are being treated poorly by the same landlord. So you have your list. You have your list. Go and let's go take care of those. We have Patrick in place here. So why so why why impose something on the entire community if you know we're doing a good job? It just doesn't feel right. It feels like, hey, this is just another way to tax all these rich landlords. Right? <laughs> I'm not looking for applause, trust me. I'm not looking for applause. That's not what it's all about. Yes, Patrick, you, you want to say something? So that's, you, you make a very good point there. Um, but there is ab this is absolutely not an attempt to tax rich landlords. But you brought up a very good idea. We're not rich. <laughs> <laughs> you, brought Use very, it facetiously. you brought up a very good point. But you also brought up a very good idea. So, um, and I will um, look into this because I, I think we know who the bad actors are. Okay, it's a, hold on, hold on, please, hold on. Let's let him finish. Yeah. Hold on, let me finish. We know who the bad actors are. We, we have all of our inspections are now um, done electronically. They're all, they're all recorded. I haven't been here that long, but I, I do have, I call them frequent flyers. And maybe this is, um, maybe this is an opportunity for our next meeting to amend this to, to direct this to people that have had violations in those last two years. And, and then if you get multiple violations, you become part of the bad actor list, and you, and you pick up inspections. Brilliant. I think that's a very good idea. Brilliant. Okay. You, do you think that's a good idea? I think it's a great idea. Madam Chair, can I ask Mr. Maggiotti one question? Mm. Mark, I've known you. Um, I just have a question, curious. Do you have your name and number posted on your inside your apartment houses? I have it on the outside on a metal sign. Perfect. That's, I just was curious because I know, and people are gonna laugh, but it's honestly, when you have a bad landlord, right? And I'm not saying you're bad by any means, I'm just, I'm gonna use you as an example though right now. Sure. Okay. We get a call that the oil tank is leaking from a tenant, okay? Your, let's just go with that. So we go there. <laughs> Some of the apartments, and I'm not saying any of you guys do this, but this is one of the big problems. There's no information, like who to contact. And there are tenants out there who do not want to give the landlord's name and number to us. So we have to try to look it up. And again, it is out of town, people, majority of the time. Excuse me. Guys, can we please be respectful? We talked about it at the beginning. 
we're gonna, uh, we're gonna, I'm just gonna have to ask people to leave if you cannot be respectful and quiet. So that's Thank my you. emphasis. So then it takes us to send certified mail and it's a whole big right. delay. That's my only emphasis is that please just make sure that if something happens at your apartment, for some reason we get called before you, just let your name and number be inside so we can call you and say, like the woman with the gas meter, you know, yeah. I'm just, that's all I'm saying to, I'm not, please don't take offense by it, that's all I'm asking. No, so thank it's, you. it's exactly what we're talking about. It's these same people. So if you don't have their names and information on the ones that are creating these violations, that's the list. That's who you, no, that, that. That, that's, that's the opportunity right there, not here. It's there. Okay. So anyway, I did some research as well. And, you know, uh, Worcester, the big city of Worcester, right? They have an inspection every five years, and it's $15 per property, just as an FYI. Um, so when we say that we feel like the fees are somewhat um, outrageous, then that's, I, I guess, justification for it. Um, Jen, you, you didn't have an opportunity to finish what you, um, your, what was your suggestion on frequency? I, so I was toying between Southbridge does five years, Worcester does five years, and then I, but I didn't know if three years was, I, I hadn't come to a firm. I was, I knew the five years. I don't think every year, but I don't know. And that's what I was hoping to get, to hear what else other people had to say. Well, yeah. you now have that information. Thank you. Um, and among the other suggestions that you made, I would like for you to um, certainly consider, or the board to consider, the opt-out feature. I think mm -hmm. that that would be, I think that's a testament to who you are as a landlord. If your tenant is willing to say, I don't need any inspection, my landlord is aces, they're not getting paid to do that. So, do, you, do you think it's an issue if we, okay, say you decide to opt, if we go with that and you decide to opt out, that we ask for that in writing from you? Yeah, oh, you don't, just, uh, I wouldn't just, have a problem with it. I can't speak for everybody else, but I have a relationship with my tenants and they know that if there's a problem, they can call me day or night and I'm there and I take care of it. And they would sign a paper for me to say yes. Because guess that. what? If I'm gonna charge, if I'm gonna get charged a hundred dollars for, for someone to go into my building, guess who's gonna pay for it? Correct, okay? mm -hmm. correct. S so um, certainly that opt-out feature, and then the other suggestion I'm going to make is the, the application fee in Worcester is zero. And you know what that's called? An incentive for the landlord to register their property. I'm not going to charge you, just register it. If you don't register it, then maybe there's a penalty. Thank you. Anyway, you. thank you. Could I? Yeah. Do we have any tenants in the audience that might want to come up? Hi, uh, my name is Caitlin Osher. I'm a tenant at 35 Fairview Ave. Um, so I'd like to give the tenants perspective. So I understand the importance of health conditions and sanitary conditions in apartments. However, my landlord is welcome to come into my home anytime in accordance with our lease. Um, and I don't think the government, the Board of Health needs to step in there. I do have a child and I don't feel that that's safe. Um, it's a blatant invasion of privacy and I think mandating biannual inspections disregards the privacy and autonomy of tenants and landlords who maintain their residences, residences diligently. So the other part of this is I know there's language to prevent the cost falling on tenants. However, when rent rises, when rent raises come, it's no surprise what it's gonna be for, uh, even if that's not what it states. The other thing that I wanna address is a comment made at the last meeting comparing uh, restaurants and apartments. I believe there was something along the lines of we inspect restaurants twice a year, so why wouldn't we do apartments? Um, it's a private home. It's not a commercial residence or a commercial space. There's no need for a biannual intrusion. Like I said, my landlord can come anytime he can put in the lease to do his own inspections but i don't feel that the state needs to be in my home so thank you i really like the idea 
I should say this louder. Yes, uh, Richard Conley, Mesa Road Extension, Dudley, Mass. Uh, I'd like to know how this gentleman got appointed. <laughs> We're not going to discuss anything that doesn't have to do with the regulation tonight. Uh, Thank you. We're not going to talk about anything that has. Well, wait a minute now. It this has is nothing a... to do with it. Yes, it has. No, it has not. Nope. Excuse me, sir. Nope. This is a public I, I hearing. Have a right to know on these. Nope. These people here have a right to know not, who appointed not, this gentleman. It has nothing to do with the discussion at hand. We talked Correct. about that. It no, it does, it does not. not. We are discussing it the housing not. regulations, nope. and that is nope. it. Because of the past history, it we've heard not. through rumors sir, what was naughty you, and what was bad. Sir, you about may have a seat. This is the housing regulation public hearing. This is only to discuss yep. the housing regulation. It is not to discuss anything else at this time. If you cannot have a seat, we will call the police to have you removed. Well, call the police. Certainly. I don't care. That's Who made you the, car, the guy to pour the house? And I've been here before, and you haven't done nothing on my street. I, I think we'll, we'll take a short recess. Sure. Call him. I shall. Should we leave?
Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to resume the meeting. We've heard a lot of comments about um, your, we've heard a lot of your comments about kind of the same thing. So we're going to take a few more so we can move on. We, we, we haven't really made a decision what we're going to do this evening. We're going to spend some more time thinking about it, but we're happy to hear uh, from a few more people. No, I'll be quiet. And, and we really want you all to please, could you hold the applause? Could you please try and keep it down? We really appreciate it. We understand where you all stand, but we want to get on with this. We'll take a couple more people, and then we're going to move on. Fair, please, if you can't be quiet, you can all exit the room. Excuse me, sir, please, please. No, I was talking to you. Okay, yeah, go ahead, ma'am. So I agree with all of the comments that have been said here, but hopefully this well, can shed. Can you just got to introduce yourself, oh, please? Sorry, uh, Samantha Lachlan, Fort Tobin Drive. I live in Dudley. My husband and I own a property in Dudley. Um, so hopefully this can shed a different angle on how I'm thinking about things, too. So we are in a housing crisis, not just in Dudley, but across the country. Rents are sky high because interest rates are sky high. People are buying properties at sky high values. So rents need to be high to maintain that. So just to give you some quick numbers, um, when we bought our property just two and a half years ago, the value and the interest rate now warrant a $1,526 increase in payment if we were to sell it today and someone else was to buy it. That is directly passed on to tenants. If there is so much red tape in this town, tens of millions of dollars of investor capital will be pulled out of it and they will go to other towns. Those properties will come for sale. We've already talked about selling ours and to go to a more investor-friendly, reasonable town. Tens of millions of dollars, honestly. And all of those rents will be increased. We own a two-family. That's a $1,500 increase in payment in their mortgage. What about a four-family? That's $3,000. That will be insane rent for a tenant to have to pay. Families won't be able to afford Dudley anymore. They'll be leaving. We, our infrastructure, can't support that. So that's a huge problem right there. Also, what's wrong with being an out-of-town investor? I don't really understand that rationale. We have investors that are... I don't think we know one said anything about that. The health inspector re continuously says that out-of-town investors have no pride of ownership in their homes. They're bringing, in, they're bringing capital to Dudley. We should welcome them, right? Economic I, I, development, I think, we should welcome yeah, them. We, we, we do. I think just what we've seen is the folks who tend to be the landlords who do not have pride in ownership, as I've heard from a lot of you in this audience, are the ones who live out of town. So if they live out of town, they don't have eyes and ears on their properties all the time. So, I mean, you can shake your head no, but 52 complaints in two years, and then prior to that, we had a ton. So uh, my uh, husband and I are buying a property in another mm -hmm. town right now. There's multiple people in this room that home properties outside of Dudley. To generalize that statement is false, ignorant, and just inaccurate. Well, I, 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 that's fair. That's your opinion. That's and you fair. mentioned that there are 52 complaints, or f between 15 and 20 landlords, that takes months to get through. So imagine now you're dealing with kind of the quick math that someone had said about 600 units in Dudley that one person cannot do if 15 to 20 take months. So that is a significant drain on the town of Dudley's resources. We all know what's going on in Dudley right now, how our taxes have gone up because we can't afford what we are spending right now. How are we going to afford all of these new regulations? And we're all leaving, all the investors are leaving. What do you do then? That's significant. So um, I agree kind of, you know, what Mark said specifically, you have your list. Let's go with that list. Yep. Maybe enact this for those people who are on the list. Enact this if people yep. get onto your list. But to make a blanket statement about landlords who, to be honest with you, I'm happy to share my financials with you as well. A two-family unit is incredibly slim margins. I'm happy to share that, fully transparent there. But um, you have your list, and we're not on it. Thank you. My name is June Finnegan. I'm a tenant at 47 Dudley Hill Road. Um, the other tenants and I are very proud of our homes that we live in. We're very proud of our landlords. 
They have integrity. They're respectful. We're respectful back to them. They are from out of town. They are there if we need them. I have lived in my apartment for 13 and a half years. I have never called the Board of Health. I don't want you in my house. If I need you, I will call you. But you don't need to come to my house. My landlord addresses everything that needs taken care of. You can come and look around the property outside. But I speak for myself and the other tenants. We don't want you to come in our homes. We don't need you to come into our homes. I have been there a long time, and I take pride in my home. All the tenants take pride in their homes. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Are we done? I think we'll take one more if there's anyone else that needs to come up. If not, then no. Hi, Mary Beth Marziotti, 50 Lakeview Ave. For a perspective of someone who does not have apartments, what, this, what we do and what this group of responsible landlords most likely do is when you bring a new tenant in, besides the pictures and the videos, there's forms. You give it to the tenant. They have a week, whatever, they, you give it to them, they look around the apartment, they use things, they, if they notice that anything is wrong, missing, broken, mm -hmm. they can note it on that. The landlord and the tenant both sign it. There are pictures that go with it. There's a documentation. We don't need to have someone come in and look at all that if the responsible landlord, they're taking care of that already. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. We did? All right, that's fine. Come on up. Thank you for having me. I'm Yamarochka. I live in a budding town, and I'm a landlord in town. Overhearing, we say, the list of the problematic landlords and the good landlords, I per se I haven't had any problems with the Board of Health. If I did and I resolved my problems, I should not be on that list where you guys would like access next right. year. Oh. No, Good point. absolutely. Right. If that was no, it, my, the, I think the, I think the intention is the habitual. Mm -hmm. Okay, habitual one, two. If they resolve their problem. No, I'm problems. talking about. The, it's the not just one or two. Trust. <laughs> if the problem is resolved, then that's fine. A new problem arises. I don't think they no. should. No, no, I agree with you that. completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I agree with that. Thank you for your time. No problem. You're welcome. All right, so. We had so, some good points. I'm going to make a motion to continue the public hearing till. I believe it's May 19th. I'm just going to double check the date. Yeah. One, one, two, three. Um, May 21st. May 21st. Yep. I'm going to make a motion to continue the public hearing till May 21st at 5:30. All right. I have a motion. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes. Madam Chair, just one so, one point of information for the audience. Yes. I would, um, I would like to um, go back and, and do another draft of this mm -hmm. and take a lot of the comments into mind tonight. We heard some very good comments tonight. Yep, excellent. Things that I never thought of. I've never had to write a housing regulation before. Um, and I, I think there's some very good, I think we can get Absolutely. where they want to be. Yeah. So can we get a draft and get it posted um, on the website, like say, where are we? By the beginning of May. Let's just get through Earth Day, and yes. Yeah, that's why I pushed it off. Yes. But like to by, by the end the of the month, there'll, yeah. there'll be a new draft. Okay. So, did everybody understand that? Thank you. Okay. We'll work on that. Um, he'll he'll take all the information from tonight, make up a draft, and post it on the website by the beginning of May, and we'll have continue the public hearing. On May 19th <laughs> at 5:30. No, it was no, May, May 21st. 21st. Sorry, got the 19th stuck um, at 5:30. Okay. May 21st. May 21st. Yep. 5:30. <coughs> All right. New business? No, we have to wait for second plan. Uh, oh. But we gotta wait for. You won't be able to hear anything. We didn't put a time that it, that it ended. Continued the public hearing at 8, uh, 7.50. So Amanda will know. Yep. I took notice somewhat. The only thing that sucks is that we can't meet, we can't meet together. 
So you might want to ask the people to be quiet because we have to move now. Um, all right, we're ready to move on. We're still in order here. So the next item up on our agenda is a proposed housing regulation um, of 234, oh, sorry, 234 Dresser Hill Road septic <coughs> plan approval. Is anyone here? Come on up and identify yourself. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Jason Dubois from DC Engineering and Survey. I don't think mine's on. Yeah. Oh, oh, it is. Uh, Tara Abasha. And Manuel Abasha. And Wait so for the door to shut. It's very Thank loud. <laughs> All you. All right. Um, I'd prefer if Patrick could give his kind of background on what we haven't been able to submit this plan. He just told us to come to the meeting, so. Okay, so from that's my not accurate. So from my understanding is, and you, I'm going to give the little because I heard yep. about it. You had submitted a plan back. Sorry, I'm not prepared for the date. It doesn't say when. Where is it? Right here. March 24th. 2021 I have a plan from that was submitted this is the plan date on here that was that was last year's plan correct that yeah. was submitted that was that was, that was approved last that was year approved. right yeah. it was submitted and approved yeah so then I'm being told that you're submitting a different plan the location of the septic system is in a different location no that's not the correct. Septic. okay can I see the new plan sure please sorry Ooh. please don't need to sound so there was a plan submitted a few months ago yep. the system was moved slightly which we were told to put the system back in the same location which we did and that was when the plan would not then be accepted without a new work test so that's okay that's that thing. It's okay. Sorry, bear with me one minute This is the old house location. This is the new house location. This is the proposed septic system, and the existing septic system is right underneath it. These are the uh, these are the original and um, additional perk tests that were done by everybody else in the last ten years. We've done the perk ten years old. Yep. But it's good forever. Yep. So I'm just trying to get my bearings. Okay. Here's this one. No, I'm trying to see. Move that back. Okay. So move the house over there. This one has no measurements. Thirty-four feet. If you'd like, I can give you a full explanation of why we kind of went through this as well. Sure, go ahead. I'm just, you can yeah. talk while I'm looking by all means. <laughs> so the original plan that was done last year had the house in the back. Correct. And the septic system was in the front yard. Um, and by doing that, the way that the, the property sloped off and the high groundwater, there was like eight feet of fill around the house. Um, so when they, when, you know, the owners purchased the property, they inherited that plan from the owner that owned it prior. Um, and they called, you know, us, their, their site contractor called me because I work with him quite a bit and asked if we could look at it and do something different that would save them on a lot of fill. So we put the house in the front, which was able to lower it about four feet. Um, and by doing that, it saved about 1,500 yards of fill. Mm -hmm. And that was- Which is about $60,000. Oh, and yeah, that's, <laughs> that's where we're at now. Um, the leach field is still in the exact same location. Can't 
see. 34 eighths. See, this has that. That doesn't there. 197. 197. Sorry, as I talk out loud. Yeah, no problem. I, if you have any questions, I can kind of point it out. So I guess I'm just, I, I see what you have here, but I'm looking at both plans, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to see, like on the new plan, you have 34.8 to the property line uh, from one part of the leach field, right? Yes. On the other plan, there's no measurement. <laughs> so <laughs> This system is a little bit longer too, because it went from a chamber system to a Presby pipe system. Okay. Which the reasoning for that is because Presby eliminated their five foot overdig. So it also saves about Four thousand dollars in septic sand, mm -hmm. um, but the leach yep. field itself is bigger. It's just that there's no overdig. So okay, so that and I do see that it's the one ninety seven, which is on the old plan from the lot line. So okay, um, but I only see where uh, one perk test was on the edge of the leach field. Yep. So typically, one perk is in the leach field and one perk is in the reserve area. Right. So the original plan that was done last year had the I'm reserve sorry. area not on any deep hole locations. The new plan that we've done has incorporating five of those perk holes or deep holes. I'm just being nosy. It's a three bedroom house. What's the, is the septic gonna be for three bedroom or more? Yes. Yes, three. Just three bedroom, okay. Just being nosy. Yeah. I didn't wanna work, so. So, and then the, okay, so just, I'm gonna double check how you're making, under, understanding what you were saying. Yep. The, um, you had submitted a previous plan. We did a submit, ago, we, we, when we first got involved, we did, we, we, we relocated the system about 40 feet further up the hill. Okay. Um, and Patrick said, you know, we have to reperk it. Right. So we put it back in the same location. Okay. Have you seen this plan, Patrick? I'm not sure. I've looked at so many plans on this. I just want, I just want to have you take a look at that for a minute. Just so I'm... I like, I like your suggestion, what, we, what you and I talked about by ourselves earlier. Yeah. That if they want to use the approved plan, yeah. give us an ad built that shows well, where I, the park was. I understand they changed the location of the house from this plan to that plan. Yep. Yep. I'm just making, I, and I'm looking at you to make sure I'm. Yes, the house definitely has been relocated. Perfect. Yep. So there is, so the leach field is still in the same location. It's been made a little bit longer. Yep. Okay. So the perk is still in the leach field? Yes. One there, of them. There is one. There of them is is. one. Yep. Right on the very edge of it. Okay. In this plan. And. <laughs> I, I, I'm not um, privy on these <laughs> things, so I don't understand why you had to move the house. So it's, still, dirt. it's still it's basically, well, yes, it's, it's still, it's still a three bedroom home, right? Yep. But so why did it have to move if the septic tank didn't move? The, the septic tank moved. The septic, the septic tank, tank moved, moved the house. leach field didn't. The tank moved. Oh, the tank is this little guy here. Yep. Okay. And they but moved the house I'm like, because of the the. the the, the, the grade. So the, the, grade. Property Thank was, you, of the property was the property was sloped like this down, and the house was like behind the septic system on the lower spot. Okay. So they had like eight feet of fill around the house. Yep. So we took the house and put it up on the hill in the front, which picked it up four feet and yep. allowed a lot less fill okay. needing to be brought in. Got it. Which is a lot. A lot of, lot of money. <laughs> so I understood that part, but I just didn't understand why it had to be moved. It's not like the septic tank was broken. No. Didn't work where it was. I just. No. Nope. I ask all the. No, the plan was approved. I, mean, I ask all the questions. The plan was fine before. Yeah, this is how you learn. Whoever, whoever <laughs> laid out the house didn't just need a lot more fill. Right at the yeah. time. So yeah. if you left it where it was and you needed to put a different leach field, it would have cost that sixteen thousand dollars. No, no? They, they would have no. imported okay. soil to raise the elevation yeah. for the house. And that's it would be I'm like sixty thousand to yeah. bring in that much fill to bring it up to where so it would work. To, uh -huh. to cut to the chase. This is fine, as long as the as bill comes in and Perfect. everything shows that everything's where it belongs. Perfect. So that's the plan. Yeah. So um, I'm going to make a motion that we approve. What's the plan dated? I'm sorry. 3524. Um, 
Make a motion to approve the plan dated for 32524. 3524. 3524. For 234. 234, Dresser Hill Road. Dresser Hill Road. And just submit the as built on completion. Okay. That's okay. my motion. All right. I have a motion and I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Pass. So, so um, I think just for building permit purposes, we're going to need a stamp approved septic plan. Right. Yeah, so yeah. this has been approved. It, well, we approved and he can. Yeah. So you just need to file the permit. Oh, she's already paid for the permit, correct? I, no, so there was it's already been cashed. <laughs> well, this I paid for oh. the, the driveway permit I've gotten and I just have to submit. The payment for the, this septic. I have to, well, yeah. I, I already paid for that. That's what Amanda told me this morning. So there was one plan that was approved. So that one wasn't paid for. The, no, they were both paid the for. Plan. This one was paid for. It's right here. All right, so yeah, she'll be in. She handles all of that. Yeah, she, yeah, she told me this morning that the, the okay. permit won't get pushed to me to approve until the um, treasurer signs off that it's been paid for. So tomorrow when I come oh. to work, I can go on the computer, see if it's come to me from our open gulf, and if it is, I'll well, sign right, it. I didn't, I didn't submit the building permit yet because it wasn't so. Yeah, that's fine. It'll be the the septic. It'll be the septic. Right. Well, I mean, I I need to have that approval before I can even ask for the building permit. Right. So. Do you have Correct. your well a well permit? It's a, a that was already in when we bought the property. Perfect. Yeah, the wells in. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, so just just so I know, because I do a lot of plans in this town and surrounding towns, do I need to come to a board meeting every time we do a septic plan now? No, it's because it was such a. There was too many other plans floating around. And we weren't right. sure what confusing. was going. All right. So I, I think again just. Just so I can say it. Yeah. it, if if we were able to discuss this, I think we could have clarified this without wasting a month and sitting here for three hours. Well, unfortunately, we only have a three-member board. No, but I, I don't. I don't feel that we need to come to the board for that. If we could have just discussed this. See, the last I had known. You never this, came to the office. I called a couple times. You never came to the office. No, but I asked. He has been on many April first. Just said come to the board. Could, if we could meet. Um, yes. The last I knew, just so I talked to Amanda, who's yep. in the office. Yep. The last I knew was that. The other plan had been submitted, not this one. Um, she brought this one? plan in many times to so go over this. Can I? Can I yeah. just sure. just let me tell you what I have heard, yep. and this is yep. why. This is why I said, well, then let's put it on the agenda. Okay, is because I was told that the plan that George approved. Okay, and then I was told there was another plan where the septic was moved, mm -hmm. and I said, and. There was a discretion about perk tests and everything, and I said, fine, bring it in front of the board. This way the board decides, and there's no issues. That's the last I knew. So I apologize. That's why you were asked to come in front of the board, is because if we're the, we're the final authority. If there's any problems with the situation like that, we're the ones who are going to say, you know, we were the, under the impression, I was, excuse me, under the impression that you had this plan with the perk test that was approved by George, and then... There was another plan where the septic was being, the leach field was being moved, but there were no perk tests in that area. And perk tests would have had to be re redone in order for that to have happened. I do not know about this plan. I, I don't know if you talked to Amanda about the new plan. I apologize. I'm only telling you the information that I had, and that is why I said, well, then put it on the agenda. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you Thank much. you. You're Okay. Have a good night. Do you want this? We'll I do. Later. Yeah. Okay. I'll bring that back. Move it on. Yep. Hey. That's all that's on the agenda. So, so we, the, um, were we going to talk a little bit about birthday? That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Birthday reminder. Yeah. Okay. For Saturday. Yeah. So it's eight to eleven at. 8 to 12. 8 the, the transfer station? 8 to 12. I thought it was 8 to 11. All right, 8 to 12. 8 to 12. And then 12 to 3 here. 11, 11 30 to 3. <laughs> what? We'll be, we'll be, we'll I be... had that backwards. <laughs> yeah. I thought we were going to end there. Okay, how about I let you guys talk? All right, so. Go. Um, at the, recyc the recycling center, mm. the town garage, I will be there from 8 a.m. until 12 noon, handing out trash bags and gloves and... I believe yeah. Rippers. Rippers. We have a bunch that came in. Yep, and um, I will water. be there. Bottle water and I. Yep. Yep. And I will be there till noon time, so you can pick your trash up. Let me know where you when you come. You'll let me know where you're yep. going, just so I know. 
and um, I'll be there till noon time, and Dudley the dog will be there. Fun. And then, Pat? Starting at 11.30. Because Roberta doesn't know. Well, Madam Chair, you can't know everything. Mm. So, um, we will be setting up for some family activities in the back parking lot uh, behind Town Hall. There will be a uh, bicycle show. You can decorate your bicycle for Earth Day. There are um, three trophies. There's a first place, second place, and third place trophy for the bike um, decorating contest. Parents are um, encouraged to help their kids. There will be um, sidewalk art in the parking lot. We have about 700 pieces of different colored chalk for kids to make some Earth Day drawings in the, in the back. There'll be some, some judging for that. We have um, Earth Day uh, medals and, and lanyards. They're really nice. Um, some bling for the kids. We um, Ice Cream Farm is bringing chocolate and vanilla ice cream. We'll be giving out free chocolate and vanilla ice cream. We are having a uh, pizza tasting contest from four of our pizza shops in town. Love it. They're supplying some pizzas, and you will get to um, eat four small slices of pizza and you'll decide who makes the best cheese pizza in town for Earth Day. Nice. I've been contacted by a few um, businesses in town. They're going to set up a table. Yeah. Um, it was Gentex that called me. They're going to do a table because uh, they make um, eyeglasses. So they want to go over, they want to talk about their mission, Yeah. have some samples, yeah. and then they're going to have a team they called me, um, she called me today and said the manager, management team of some sort are going to put together a team to do um, cleanup. Yeah. So that'll be good. And then for the, the rubbish pickup um, in the parking lot, um, D&D Rubbish, a, a business here in town, um, will be supplying um, some barrels in the parking lot, picking that waste up at the end of the day and taking away for free. D&D Rubbish will be... Um, putting a truck at the DPW for the trash to go into. They'll be taking that trash away for free. And then they will take their um, rubbish packer and they will drive around town and pick up all of the bags that people leave by the side of the road that don't get delivered um, to the DPW. And I've spoken to MJ from DPW and we're gonna coordinate making sure that all of the bags get picked up at a timely yep. manner. So if you can't get to the DPW, Leave it in a very conspicuous place where it won't get run over, yep. um, but leave it in a conspicuous place and, and it will get picked up. And, and all of that's being done for free by D&D &D Rubber. Nice. Very good. Yep. Dudley will be down afternoon time. When he finishes at the highway, he'll come down to the event here. Well, Dudley should have pizza, not a dog. I'm glad he's feeling better. <laughs> all so, right. Um, I have one question. Yeah. Two questions, actually, regarding oh, it. Oh, boy. Um, have we contacted the police about um, moving their cruises? Yeah, and usually they'll block the top. Well, actually, if you just stay up there, yeah, moving the. Cruises. I will because we need to get some electricity from their their side door over there. Yep. For Aaron, and we have some music for the kids too. Yeah. We have some kids. Fun. So. Okay, great. And then, um, what if it rains? Um, if it rains, yeah, we're going to have um, three trophies left over for next year's um, <laughs> Earth Day and some. Really so. If so it, I didn't have the dates. Yep. No, on that's the trophies perfect. and the medals. In case it rains. So if it does rain and this will be uh, canceled, we will post it on Facebook, social media, and yeah. outside. On the I, 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 they won't be able to because the town hall closes at noon yeah. on Friday. There's only a forty percent chance of right. rain. Um, you know, what, what's a couple of? For the most part, I don't think that the. The morning trash pickup will get canceled because people no. still pick up in the trash, and I'll be down there regardless. So, and and we were going to have the Boy Scouts um, serve hot dogs, but due to the weather part of it and the fact that um, having kids working with a grill could have been a little dangerous, and not wanting to have 75 hot dogs left over because it rained. Right. Um, I spoke to the scout master. She's going to try and get a few scouts to come and help um, hand out the pizza for the pizza contest. Um, she may only have one, one kid available because they do have a camping trip that weekend. Yeah. And I have a friend who's a scout master, and it usually rains every time he has a um, camping trip. So. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, that's, that's good. But it should be a good event. 
Yep. It's not just picking up yeah. trash, and the kids will love it. Um, and the, the medals and the trophies are really nice. Excellent. That's great. Yeah. I might bring a bicycle and dedic do it myself and see if I can win. So. Um, no. I don't, you can bring it, but I don't think you'll win. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, we don't want you to Who's yeah. judging that, by the way? <laughs> we have some, ju some judges. Yes, I think so. I don't know. Do we? I don't know. Me? It I could can. be one of you. All right, I will. <laughs> Fair. Oh, Mr. Zakowski will. We just, no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, Good right. to know. Thank we'll you. We'll figure it out. <laughs> all right. So I entertain a motion to. Uh... I, I, I do. do you have any? Did you ask the public if they have any comments? Mr. Z? No? Okay. Make a motion to adjourn. Oh, I have a motion and I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned at 8 11.